Welcome to Stampscaping 101. We just did this piece last night in a live stream. Really like how it came out. When I do these uh, kind of experiments, um, and if I like the results, I like to come up with uh, some faster versions of it. So we're going to try um, doing some uh, versions of it on quarter page printable vinyl holographic cardstock okay so the printable is the big word in the description of this type of surface right here you'll want to use the printable type okay it's not holographic um, cardstock it's hologra uh, holographic printable vinyl all right so we're just going to lay down some white brilliance ink and now i see people every time someone has you know kind of uh some uh Oh, kind of difficulties with some of the techniques that I'm doing. It's because they're not using um, the same media that, you know, I'm using. So this one's Brilliance water-based um, pigment ink, and it's also fast drying. And that's because this printable vinyl is made for water-based media. Now, sometimes people use um, the Brilliance White, and that's fine, but they might use a different type of ink to print on top of that, and sometimes those inks aren't compatible either. Now, there's a lot of different techniques that I do on um, different types of surfaces that are completely pat compatible with any brand of ink you might want to use. Like, for example, if I'm using a dye-based ink, then you can use other types of dye-based inks, okay? Um, and I could, it's t totally understandable, too, because a lot of times people will think that um, a similar type of ink is the same, so they'll think a pigment ink is a pigment ink. And 9 out of 10 times it is, but Brilliance is different. It's water-based. All the other ones, and I wish they would say on those um, pads, but they don't. But most of them, if not 100% of the other ones, are oil-based, okay? And, and it's... That's why we can stamp something out and it can be sitting there for a few minutes and you can put your embossing powder on them and they dry just fine, um, you know, when embossed and heated up and, uh, or we're, we're stamping them on like a matte cardstock or something like that and it dries by absorption and evaporation. Uh, but this is a little bit of a different type of uh, process right here. Now, you can print on this with different types of inks, okay? But if you're doing it over the top of the brilliance, then just be a kind of aware of compatibilities. Do some tests, you know, is the, is the big thing. See how things dry, see how things apply, and you'll get a better um, idea and feel of what, you know, you can possibly use within your media, okay? Um, but that is printing on here direct. I'm talking about, you know, I'm going to print some stuff over the top of this white, but sometimes if you print on this directly, there could be some com compatibility issues. Sometimes, it ha you know, it's not always the type of ink, too. I found, not, not necessarily on this, but on different types of surfaces, sometimes it's... You know, it depends how fast things are drying um, due to the relative, I don't know, whatever, humidity, temperature of a location. Sometimes things uh, work out better, I don't know, in the summer when it's dry. You know, things are hotter and they're drying faster. I mean, that's usually not the case, but in the, you know, once in a while there's um, some sort of... Uh, you know, kind of issue that comes into play that has to do with uh, temperature and humidity. Uh, specifically, I'm mean, thinking about things like, um, oh, like a versifying oil-based uh, pigment ink on, you know, a glossy cardstock, you know, it might not dry for me um, quickly where I am in California, but, you know, I'm demonstrating at a convention in Arizona and that ink seems to dry like within an hour or something like that. Okay, so what I'm doing right here is I'm, well, I'm 
naturally doing four of these pieces, but um, I'm going about one third of the way up my scene with, with a pretty solid application of this white. And then I'm kind of coming up here a little bit more and what this will represent in the distance is kind of a like a cloudy mist. So I'm doing it with kind of a drier um, cotton ball at this point in time. So I start low and then I kind of work higher. Okay, now don't worry about um, things like blobby style applications. You know, you can see it where it's, you know, it's not real evenly applied. Um, it might even look real uneven, okay? When we stamp over the top of it with our imagery and we do our colored pencil um, techniques on here, you're not really going to be kind of aware of any kind of a, I don't know, application. Um, uh, whatever, dexterity, smoothness, um, that maybe is desirable on other types of surfaces and techniques. But on this, it's just kind of about coverage and uh, not necessarily an even amount of coverage either. Sometimes it looks better too, having that kind of blobbier application. Okay, you can look at all these. They're, they're all kind of different from one another. Not that I was going for that. It's just, you know, that's the way it happened to come out. Okay, this is Brilliance Black. We'll apply, apply it to the snow, snowy brook. I'm not stamping the whole piece. I, I'm kind of going, eh, it's probably about two thirds of it just because I don't have space, uh, as much space on this. Uh, quarter page cards as I did on the, uh, you know, the full page. Maybe I should stamp that over here a little bit more. Each one of these, you know, I, t I intend for them to come out a little bit different. I might even use different imagery on the different um, pieces here. Some people ask about my uh, tack and peel. This is tack and peel. You can see this uh, piece on my acrylic block. This is a a pretty big acrylic block, but this is a whole piece of um, tack and peel used on this one. I think I have a video on that. I have about three tack and peel videos. I really love this uh, material. This is a real kind of like, I don't know what it is, like a, it's like sequins or something like that, or like some kind of like digital pixelated uh, looking um, pattern. It's pretty fun. And it's a pattern that, you know, just looking at it, I don't know, maybe a year ago or two years ago, I wouldn't have known what to do with it. <laughs> it's just such a loud piece. I would have been thinking about maybe mounting or matting, you know, some other type of scene on it. But uh, anyway, now this one right here, I have a little bit less of that white ink. So a lot of that kind of glittery surface kind of shows through. Okay. But that's what I kind of want. I want some of that uh, texturing to be like it's reflecting in the snow. All right. Let's go for, um, let's do the, uh, the birch trees again here. Okay, I'm not gonna have space for um, all of it, all of them, you know, the different uh, sizes here. So I'm not gonna be doing a lot of the top portion, so I just have this kind of hanging off the top of this. You want the, your trees to go off the top of your uh, pages, usually. I've been using the Art Foamies ones, but these ones are going to be a little bit too big for my... Uh, yeah, I mean, it could go there, but they're a little bit big. I like them on a like half page or full page. Might even stamp this one off the edge, so I'll be just stamping the two trees on this one. 
Look how great that prints out. Now, see, this is over the top of the, uh, the white brilliance, and up here it's just on the bare vinyl. And it, that water-based ink really um, prints out really nicely. Okay, let's do... I don't know. I might just mass-produce this. I was thinking about using the, uh, the winter ash tree on one of these and then putting in some white little um, I don't know, whatever snow blossoms I'm calling them. <laughs> Maybe I'll do it on one of them, I don't know. Inked up the wrong side. This uh, this birch is a little bit larger than the other one, so I'm stamping this one on this side because the other one will go up here. Although, yeah, you can use either one. Or if you want it to go, you can use the same one. I like to go for a little bit of a, a change in kind of gestural form. This one's a little bit more bent. And I made the uh, the trunk smaller, so, you know, if we did use them in conjunction with one another, we'd be able to play with um, scale and uh, kind of... Uh, it's kind of a, like a movement to the uh, stalks like that, the trunks. Okay, see, it looks a little bit different like that, having the two different ones in there. And this ink, believe it or not, almost as soon as you stamp it out, this is one of the reasons why I'm using brilliance on here, is it, it dries almost instantly. I can probably run my finger across that without it... Um, coming off right now. I'm not going to try it right now, but I probably could. It dries pretty fast, especially on this um, printable vinyl. If I'm doing it on foil or something like that, cardstock, you're not going to do that because um, the foil cardstock, you'll want to let it sit and dry for a little bit. I'm mean, not talking about a huge amount of time, you know. 30 minutes or so, and then you spray seal those ones, but on this one it's really affixed because this uh, printable vinyl has that emulsion coating on there. Okay, now these ones, I mean, it's really going to be awesome when you use, if you use what I use, um, a pastel pencil on those birch trees, but I, I mean, that looks pretty cool just as is, too. It's a little bit glittery in there, and if you use the pastel pencil on here, you know, they stand out more as kind of white and a little bit more opaque, or a lot more opaque. But, you know, if you're doing, I don't know, 20 of these, maybe it's a little late for that, but I don't know. I guess people are still doing their Christmas cards. Um, I mean, you can just leave it at that, and it looks pretty cool. Or I'll show you how to use your uh, white paint pen as well. Okay, let's see, on this one, or on all of them, maybe we'll add our, you know, some kind of moon on them. Let's go ahead and do that, why not? I think it gives it a pretty good focal point. Okay, white brilliance. Let's grab your cotton ball again. I think this is the one that I was using. Go a little bit lower on this one, just for kicks. You can even have one like with the moon rising kind of on the horizon if you want to. And this one, let's go up here in the corner. 
And again, just, I don't know, just for variation. All right. And one more, why don't we go roughly center. Uh, centered in between the trees I'm referring to. It's probably a little bit left or right of center. Yeah, a little bit right of center in terms of the overall card. Did I say left of center? Right of center. Okay. Should we get all, all of our impressions done first before we go into anything else? Okay, let's grab this silhouette deer. Now in some kind of scenario, there might be a situation where you stamp this in white. It's like the white stag, which would look kind of cool. The white against this background, this background isn't very dark though, so that white wouldn't stand out, you know, so I'm going to stamp this one in black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is what I didn't do yesterday or last night, is I didn't wipe off the bottom here. I'm going to wipe off the bottom so it stamps out lighter, if not disappeared, so that it looks like, you know, this um, deer is standing in the snow. As opposed to right on top of it. Okay, it's like that. It's a little, little bit floating up there actually, huh? Let's see here. Maybe this one's, maybe this is a little bit big for this. Okay. Let's switch up here. Let's go with this little dough. Wipe off the bottom a little bit. On this one right here, I'm going to bring up this little snowy bank a little bit higher. Let's use this, um, let's use a piece of paper towel as a little bit of a template here. I could use my curved one as well like this and create kind of this ridge right in here. I want to do that. Okay. So we have that nice little ridge there. Actually, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> I was thinking maybe I should do it on these other ones. Add it down there like that. I'll just use a little bit of a piece of this one. Might even look in on this one right here. I 
I'd probably have to add that on that full length, um, but I'll, I'll just put a little bit of a piece of that here right now. I kind of see it in there. I have like a bank of clouds back there or mist. All right, let's address um, here. This is how these ones are all looking right now. Let's, uh, this one looks pretty cool just as, as without a tree. Yeah, but I wanted to experiment with the tree though. That always happens, you know, you can go into these uh, pieces with some kind of a uh, notion of what you're going to be adding into the scene. And then as you're working on it, you know, don't be afraid to kind of change up your strategy or your initial concept. Yeah, at least in terms of the composition, you know, on this one, I, I mean, I definitely want to, you know, experiment with something um, specific. You know, so I'm going to stick to that. But as far as like um, smaller things like the composition, you know, I might um, change my mind. Okay, I'm looking for my large winter ash tree. And I need to go find that, apparently. I don't know where it is. All right, large winter ash. And let's see, let's mask off so that it looks like it's in the snow. I should be doing it with a rounded. Um, ripped paper towel, but we'll just go with the uh, straight edge here, because it won't matter too much. Because the trunk isn't super thick. All right, so I like that. Uh, let's do it again. I see it's kind of like in the snow there, so I, I didn't stamp out the bottom part of the trunk. All right, and we'll go for another one. Right in the background. Kind of using a, like a quarter of the uh, stamp and using the large one gives scale. So it, it kind of puts the uh, things in proportion a little bit more with the uh, the deer. I don't want to make it look like the deer is like some kind of gi gigantic uh, creature. So you put a big tree next to it like that. And I think that looks pretty cool. All right, now I won't be able to use my uh, pencil on this, my pastel pencil, quite as much. Let's see. All right. Yeah, that winter ash looks pretty cool. I do like the birch trees, though, with that white bark. Okay. Um, hmm. Let's go for the winter brush in there while we're at it. What I was kind of wondering is if I should do the coloring first and then do the winter brush in here first. But let's let's get most of the stamping done. Or all the stamping done. A little foreground with the winter brush like that. Kind of gives it a nice wintry feel with those little bushes like that. And it kind of reiterates what's going on in that terrain, I kind of put these little craggy little, uh, I don't know, whatever seasonal brush in there, you know, without leafless, you know, leafless seasonal. All right. Few of these made. Um, 
people seem to like what they saw, so I'm getting a couple of orders for uh, some of these images, and I want to send out one uh, with the uh, with their order. I don't always have everything, you know, for everything on there, but um, if I can see like a you know a video that's obviously inspired people to uh, give it a try, I like to uh, send something out with their uh, with their orders. Okay, so let's see here. We're gonna add in some uh, colored pencil work down into the uh, the snowy areas in here, but I also want to block out the birch tree um, areas where that patterned holographic is showing right through. So this is a white pastel pencil, okay, and. This is not kind of a, a paper that's been, you know, ideally suited for this type of pencil, okay? But it, it works surprisingly well on here, and you'll need to spray seal this, but you need to spray seal dry pastels, on, you know, if you're working on anything. Now, if you need to, kind of allow the um, stamps to set up a little bit more. I'm feeling a little bit of this black ink is still a little bit wet for me, but it's still allowing me to apply. So in this video, I, I don't want to wait for it to dry too much. So I'm just going in right now and applying. Yeah, it's smearing my uh, impression a little bit, but I'm going to be covering up a uh, you know, a decent amount of these trees anyway, so it really doesn't matter too much. Okay, now one of the things I notice is some of that wet ink gets on here, and then it doesn't feel like it's applying as much, so just kind of scribble it off, and then it applies really nicely. Maybe I should heat set these a little bit more. I tell you what, um, I'm going to let these trees dry a little bit more, so while they're drying, Let's go ahead and add in some of our kind of blue tone shadows down in this water area, okay? Maybe this is a little bit wet too, but here's what I'm doing. I'm applying this and I'm kind of coloring, not so much the paper, okay? But I'm coloring the Brilliance ink, which has um, dried and has created a little bit of a coating on the surface of the holographic cardstock and that's the thing that's really allowing me to apply some of the colored pencil okay you can't build up you know five layers of colored pencil but it really does allow us to apply you know I don't know maybe two or three light layers of colored pencil and that's all you really need Okay, now if you ask me where am I applying it, you can see these darker areas on this brook, right? The rocks right here, the water itself, and there's like these little defining shaded contour areas like that where it separates this, you know, closer rock and mound to this more distant one. See that right in there? So what you're doing is you're just coloring, coloring right in there on that area like that, and I'll color in that background rock. I'll show you right here. So see how that separates that background one from this foreground. You can see this rock right here and this one. See that line right there of tone? I'm just kind of reiterating that somewhat. So you're not coloring in the whole thing. You're just kind of adding shade, additional colored shade, where I've drawn in the shade in the design, okay? If you get it somewhere where I didn't have it, that's no big deal. That is absolutely fine. Maybe there are some additional shadows in this terrain. And I'm doing it in this kind of turquoise-ish, warm, you know, kind of lighter tone blue. But I'll add in some darker shade shadows too. But even if you just did it like that, I think that would be fine, just as is, you know, without going to... Uh, you know, darker tones. We yeah, like with this a uh, little bit of a darker blue. I 
love colored pencil on um on brilliance on pr printable vinyl um, holographic paper i just think it's a really nice real soft look um that's been introduced into this scenario Be it, just because the uh the metal holographic is so um kind of stark and loud this is colored pencils are one of the more mellow kind of soft mediums that uh, we can use you know things like pastels are that way too chalks but colored pencils um have a real soft kind of you know they you know, they could be bold er but they're generally kind of a more mellow type of um medium All right. Kind of pulling this little shadow in the snow. Um, being cast by the moonlight. I'm going a little bit faster here because this is, I don't know, maybe the third or fourth one I've done since yesterday. I don't know. And then I was using this um, Snowy Brook last week to on the uh the white i mean the uh the wood grain paper so i know where all the uh little kind of ridges are on it i mean i could see it you know but now that i've just been doing it over the you know the past few days you know the same images it goes much faster And when you go a little bit deeper in the shadows, what happens is, as a result um, of creating that contrast, um, you know, the lighter areas within the, in this case, the snow, stand out a little bit more, or a lot more, depending on how dark you go next to it, next to those objects or areas. And as we're doing this, like I said, um, our, um, you know, it's giving our, ch our inks up here a chance to dry a little bit more.
I usually use black down here as well, but I, I think I might just leave it with just the uh, two shades of blue for my shadow work. So I'll go a little bit darker with my dark blue then if I'm not going to go into black. See that like that? Uh, a little bit more here. Okay, let's go back to our pastel pencil. You can see our uh, kind of rendering of the uh, the snowy floor forms. Okay, now this one's the one I was working on. You can see the opacity of those trees versus like these ones. Um, or I did use it on this one. <laughs> Here, let's compare these two like that. See these ones, how they stand out against that background more from the pastel pencil? And these ones, you know, just have that glittery, you know, background showing right through. So we'll go on here. Yeah, much better. This is, uh, the inks are a lot drier now. Uh, the black ink. Kind of just go right up, um, you know, um, we'll have some of the, uh, that glitter background showing through a little bit, but you don't have to be, um, real careful about this either. I kind of do it a little bit spotty, so I'm going right here, and then I'm going up here a little bit. I'm trying to work around some of those, um, birch tree textures as well, those, I don't know what you call them, those eyes type of things in the, uh, the bark. You know, it gives the, the birch trees the, the character. They're not just like, you know, like PVC piping and, you know, without any kind of texture at all. So I'm kind of working around it. So I'm applying my white pastel pencil kind of in a more textural way. So I'm kind of hitting it here, here, here. And making some areas, you know, some of the uh, areas of the uh, the trunks a little bit lighter in some areas with the heavier application of pastel. See like that? See how those trees really stand out against the background more now? And again, here's a uh, comparison between this one and this one. You can see, you know, these ones are darker as well, but, you know, these ones really kind of stand out from a dimensional standpoint better. Now on this one I did, I was thinking this one does stand out kind of, I did have some uh, pastel in it. it, it just didn't fill it up uh, completely. I didn't realize I did this one already. Or I, I did a little bit of it, not all, not all the trunks. Let's see, I guess on this one I didn't do it all. And again, compare, contrast. This would be a better comparison. That's the same textural paper. See that? These trees again versus these ones. So each one of these trunks doesn't take a long time. Might have been like 10 seconds for that trunk, I don't know, a little bit less. Okay, there you have it. Okay, now let's go in with our 
I'm going to use a, uh, a three millimeter paint pen. I, I feel that this paper is so loud it, it can really hold up against, um, you know, kind of the bolder applications of uh, acrylic paint. You can use your um, 0.7 millimeter too, the extra fine. Uh, the extra fine might have a little bit more chance of kind of clogging as you're applying it though, um, because it's just this little plastic cylindrical um, feeder tip right here, okay? Where this is like one of those like cloth, I don't know, whatever you call it, fabric tips, okay? And I'm just applying this on the side of the birch trees that are kind of facing the, uh, the moon. I'm kind of doing it a little bit choppy. Uh, this paint will dry a little bit lighter than, I mean, darker than how it looks when freshly applied to. You see that right there on the side of the trunk, okay? And I'll have it just kind of merge right with some of the snow down here, right around the base of the trunks. I'm going to taper it off a little bit to blend it in with a little bit of dots. Now on some of these areas of these little ridges in the snow, on the snowy brook, I'm putting some white right on the top of them. And there's these little snowy little... Um, areas in the water where rocks are have a little bit of snow. Um, you know, there's a little snow kind of top to them, and I'm applying some additional snow right on the top of them to make those stand out a little bit more. See, this is the white of the uh, the brilliant sink, and this is you can see the white of the acrylic paint pen. So this is right up here. And I got a little bit of uh, colored pencil work because I'm not you know, spending a lot of time kind of being super careful with that, but it's because I just go back in with this anyways, and I'm applying some of this back in there, so being super careful with either brilliance ink or the um, colored pencil. I mean, you could be care more careful than I was, but um, you don't really need to be. Because there's other techniques that we end up doing anyway that kind of remedy those, um, I don't know, in some cases, even like a, almost like a haphazard application. Okay, you can see that right there where I've picked up some of that black ink. Okay, so just kind of mop it off a little bit, get this flowing again. And there you have it. Okay. Now, if I'm doing a one-off and I really want to be super careful about it, I might be a little bit more careful. There is something to kind of the spirit of this kind of faster, free-flowing kind of application of media, though. It's a little bit more spirited and kind of gestural looking uh, than being kind of stiff, stiffer. And I, I do some things, you know, a little, you know, a little more stiff looking at times. But on these ones, I want these just to be some fast um, versions, faster versions. All right, so there you go, like that. I think that looks pretty cool. You have that kind of this, it's kind of like a corridor of light, isn't it, in here? And there's your small version of this one. This one's kind of cute, isn't it? <laughs> okay. See how I have my 
I have this card turned. It's because I'm doing a lot of horizontal applications of this pen, so I turn this where it's kind of a natural uh, mark for my hand, okay? Rather than going like this. See, I can't see what I'm doing because my hand is in front of my face, so I can see what I'm doing here because I'm looking at it from this angle here too. But it's also kind of the natural movement of my hand, so keeping things nice and um, ergonomic here. Okay, let's put some on these trees here. So some kind of see, I turned my trees upside down here because I can get this same mark, and I can see what I'm doing again by turning this in the direction that's the most conducive for this application of uh, media. And it's because this is this little mark I'm putting it in specific areas, you know, on the edge of the tree or something like that. If I'm doing like cotton ball application in the background, I don't need to, you know, see what I'm doing, you know, very carefully. So, but on like a tool like this, I want to be able to see exactly where I'm applying something. Right, a little bit different from the other one, the previous one, different lighting maybe. And here we go on this one. If you decide you, that you need more pastel pencil or something like that, or colored pencil, then you can always go back to it. There's not a point of no return on any of these different types of applications here. Sometimes I'll look at it and it's like, I'll take a look and it's like, oh, I need to even something out a little bit more, taper it out a touch. 
All right, let's take a look at this one and see how this one goes with the uh, winter ash trees. These are some really simple compositions, but I really like the look of these pieces. And uh, relatively fast uh, when, it, when it comes to the overall kind of final result of these pieces, you know, the amount of work that we need to do in order to kind of achieve the final result is, I think, relatively uh, kind of minimal uh, for the amount of kind of dynamic, I don't know, whatever return that we get from it. I think these are kind of like wow cards, especially for if you're giving it to someone that hasn't, you know, received something kind of in this look or technique before having that holographic uh, surface paper. Um, you know, it's just it it becomes kind of a interactive piece because they hold it and they kind of turn it around and the the light if it's up on a you know wall or mantle or something I don't know wherever they keep it on display on a refrigerator as they look at it from different angles it the light changes on it and uh, you know you get that holographic look like on something like this you'd get it look you know, just, you know, going, changing rooms. But look at that winter ash on there with the white paint pen. It's like little early spring blossoms, or you can call it winter. <laughs> winter blossoms or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool, though. It's winter ash. I don't know, maybe that looks pretty good. Uh, the, the birch course is you know kind of dynamic in itself a lot of people like uh, birch trees and that uh, you know, that whole bark um, look to them in different seasons uh, as well All right, so anyway, hmm, fun stuff. You can see each one's a little bit different from one another. I mean, these three are, you know, real summer, but this one has the uh, kind of that sequined background to it, like that. This one has the uh, starry holographic. Like that. This one's a little bit more subtle, kind of lighter looking too, I guess. Hey, look at that. I just kept a, just enough of it down here exposed so you get a little of that twinkly looking light down in that water section. 
And here you go with the uh, the large winter ash. Like that. I think that's really fun. Did I do one of these pieces? Here's the art foamy is kind of similar version. So I haven't done a uh, eight and a half by eleven like this. Could, but it would look somewhat like that. Fun pieces, pretty easy technique. Let's see, so, okay, so I'm at like 56 minutes here. So that's, you know, if you break that down, it's less than 15 minutes per piece. So pretty quick scene versions, uh, you know, quick cards. Uh, yeah, we haven't, you know, formatted the cards into, uh, you know, uh, on a card base or something like that yet, but just getting these um, pieces done like that, I don't, you know, I don't think it would take uh, too long to uh, to do these at all. The biggest, I, I guess, the most time-consuming might have been. Oh, uh, was it the just getting getting that blocked out kind of base area going first with the. Um, white pigment ink. And I mean, that didn't take too long. And it can't, you know, if these are, like I said, like averaging like 15 minutes each or something like that. So um, I don't know. I think it's a pretty dynamic look, again, for the amount of time uh, that it takes to do these pieces. Um, trying to think of other things to say about it. Maybe a little quote stamp up here, or you can put that, you know, on the outside of your card or something like that in there. Um, we can do something like this too, probably in a reflection card format. I need to get some silver card stock. I might be out, but you know, a reflection card format would look something like this in here. You know, we need to get that uh, kind of brook kind of going down into um, this water area like that. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, it looks pretty good. And this could be like, you know, the pond area down below like that. But I think that would make for a pretty dynamic card. Plus, when you do something like this, when you do a reflection card like this, all the work that you put up here for that piece is, it's duplicated, kind of, down below. I mean, it's, you know, a bit more of a blurry version where it's reflecting what's up top there like that. But a couple um, foreground images on the left and right down here uh, would do just fine, but yeah, that'd be a cool reflection card. All right, folks, hope you enjoy this, uh, these pieces like this. Uh, keep it loose, you know, and don't uh, get too fussy about things. Uh, <laughs> you could, but um, I don't know. This paper's really loud in the background, so getting like super smooth applications of media on there, be it any of it, the white pigment ink, the pastel pencil, the colored pencil, or the white paint pens. I mean, I guess it can make a little bit of a difference, but um, I don't know. I was really loose with my applications of it, and I mean, if you look close on these, you know, you can tell, oh, I, yeah, it looks a little bit heavy or something like that in there. I don't think it really matters too much. No, you can, you can, I can put another layer of a little bit of pigment ink over the top of this, but I don't think it really needs it. I did it on my um, larger piece and created a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of fog at the base of some of these trees, like in front of them, like that, but... Um, I think that would look okay, but it, like I said, I don't know if it really needs it on these pieces. So I'm just going to leave it at that. All right, some different cards going out. Hope you enjoyed the scene again, and thanks very much for watching, and hope to see you on the next uh, video.